I'm going to review this Kaiweed Smart Multimeter. This is the ST600Y. I'm going to do accuracy testing and all sorts of stuff, so stick around and we'll see how good this meter is. So this meter was sent to me as a gift from Kaiweeds at Christmas time actually. That's quite nice isn't it? A little note from them. Thanking me for my previous review. So this was unexpected, I didn't actually know this was coming, it just turned up and it's like, okay, free multimeter, who's going to complain about that? This is apparently a new model, so we'll have a look at it. Standard probes, yeah, there's PVC leads. These are rated at CAT3 600 volt with the covers on it will be, and it will be CAT2 at 600 volts without the covers. Thermal couple probe, probably a K-type, and obviously the meter itself, which is a nice tight fit inside this case. That's... Now the case itself is like a semi-hard case, it's fairly rigid, so it's quite well protected. Puncture resistance and stuff like that, so it's pretty good. So it's got this bumper on here, which I think is a plasticized polyvinyl chloride, PVC to the common knowledge, and I believe that's what it is. There's the markings inside, fairly sure that's plasticized PVC. Apparently it's got a fuse in there, 10 amp fuse. Four AAAs it takes. A series of manual comes with it. So it's a 600X and a 600Y have the same manual. What differences? There you go. You can read that in your own time. It's basically 0.5% on DC. AC is 0.8%. Resistance is 1%. ACDC current is 1.2%. These all plus a few counts. Capacitance 4%. Frequency duty 1%. Temperature of polyvinyl test. It depends more on your thermocouple probe than the meter itself. Diode drop is like 50 ohm triggering for the sounder. Now you did read the manual didn't you? Don't forget to click like and subscribe as well if you like these multimeter review videos where I'm testing all these different multimeters out and checking the accuracies. Feels like a threaded insert. Yes it is. Non-captive screw though. And I've got some cheap batteries out and it's got some batteries in it here. Still inside the wrappers. So it actually included the batteries. Oh it's beeped. There you go. It's already on. Alright, so the fuse must be behind the main panel here because it's not behind the battery cover so we'll do a teardown later on and have a look inside once we've done all the accuracy testing on it with my calibrator and we'll see how good it is on the calibrator. But on the jack spacing, let's have a look with the four mil jacks, that's, that's always a good thing, let's check the spacing out, make sure it's standard sizing. Yeah, here's a standard sized jack. Yep, yeah, standard sizing. Excellent, that's always a winner. Alright, let's power it up, see what happens. Obviously you know it powers up, we saw that before. So it's doing auto ranging, which is very similar to the previous Kiwits I reviewed, which had that changing around between the auto range because it's called a smart multimeter. Well, it's not actually auto ranging, it's auto moding. I keep calling it auto ranging or ranging, it's modes which are changing. So let's plug the probes in. Display angles, so look at this, let's check the display angles out. So laying flat down and tilting it all the way up, that's like not really changing intensity. It's probably peak intensity is about there, it's sort of 45 degrees. And as I get to about 90 degrees, it starts to fade out. So it's exactly the same as the other meter. Might be the same display, maybe. It's very similar anyway. But yeah, it's a good display angle because these are obviously designed for laying on a bench because there's no tilting bay or anything on them. They're meant for being flat on the bench, which means this angle's been optimised for viewing it at a shallow angle. And that's fine. I mean, if it's allowed for, I don't have a problem with it. What I do have a problem with is meters where you don't have a tilting bail, but the displays haven't been optimised for that viewing angle because sometimes they're optimised for straight on or even slightly upwards. Let's see what we get here. That's yeah, fast. It switched modes fast. Well, it went to resistance fast anyway. Bus is a bit slow on, on this auto moding mode. But it did detect it as a resistance measurement really quickly, so that's quite good. Now, something I did notice previously when I was doing the other testing was that. On the other meter, it wasn't until about half a volt was when it registered there was a voltage present. So I'm going to quickly test that now with my PDVST Mini from Ian Johnston. Excellent little test of this. It's a high precision DC source. I'm going to use my calibrator as well on this later on, so I'll stick around for that. But I just want to do this quick test now. So I plugged in this lead and it's beeping like crazy. This is outputting zero volts right now. Let's go 100 millivolts. Okay, now I think there's a resistance of 600 ohms. 20 millivolts. It's doing resistance mode, 300 millivolts. When does it decide it's something else? 700 millivolts, it's hunting, trying to figure out what it is. 800. There you go, 800 millivolts is where it realises it's a voltage. So it's actually slightly worse than the other meter I viewed in that way because that is at half a volt, it's 0.5. That's when that one actually realised it was something else, not just floating or resistance. If you're going to be measuring low voltages like this, don't use the auto mode, you have to do the manual mode. 
put it down to 700, now it's grabbed it, will it work? No, it's gone back to auto again. It's trying to find out what it is, can't figure it out. That's what I expected, the other one had the same issue. As long as you know that this is a thing, if you're trying to measure a voltage, and no, definitely a voltage, then be wary of that. So this is where we do functions, it calls modes functions, which is fine. So that goes one way, and it goes the other way. Now that's quite nice, the other meter had only, you can only go around clockwise, so you have to go all the way around to get back to the beginning again. So this can go up and down. That's a nicer feature. Okay, if I'm on voltage, now I'll drop it down. 100 millivolts, a couple of counts out actually. Let's see what it does in my main calibrator. Let's do 1 millivolt. That's actually correct. Continuous testing is one of the things I use multimeter for quite a bit actually. You're checking for short circuits or you've got diode mode as well. Let's go back to auto mode. So if I'm doing that, tapping in auto mode, it doesn't really do anything. So what you actually want to do is go to continuity mode, speed, see tapping like that isn't getting every one. I'll go slightly longer. It is fairly quick. Certainly seen worse. Let me clean these terminals up because sometimes these probes they've got like an oxidization layer or some kind of film on them because these are nickel coated and sometimes that can cause problems with initial contacts. Let me just clean these probes up. Okay, so they're definitely clean now. I think it's basically the same, maybe slightly better. But it's still pretty quick. So how long do we get a reading? Probably half a second to get a reading. So the buzzer's pretty fast, but it's not so fast that you can do that, which some meters can do. This is actually, it's okay. It's certainly not the worst I've tested. So for instance, if you want to do like continuous testing, usually you want to run across a lot, bunch of pins. So I've got this on the ground terminal right now on this Arduino Pro Mini. This is my DRAM tester which I recently built, this is my prototype, I've got proper walls coming. So normally, you want to run across the pins like that. See if we can find a connection. That's fast, can't do it. Go slower. So, yeah. But it's a bit slow for my liking, really. It's okay, I say. It's not the worst I've seen. Let's quickly look at diode mode. Yep, no beep on that one, it's just diode only. It would be nice if that beeped. I do like it when diode mode beeps because you can be testing diodes and then you can actually find a junction. Right, so if I bring this ball back in again and I measure on this transistor here there's a diode junction there but there's no beep and the beep is nice because well, that is actually pretty fast though it's a pretty fast measurement but the, the beeping is nice because it gives you a bit of reassurance it means you can actually just go test 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 without looking at your meter a bit faster but it doesn't have that it's still fast though it's a fast reading which is good so one thing I wanted to check for, because it's not in the manual, is the diode voltage. So in diode mode you've got a voltage it puts out. We're getting 3.9 volts, that's actually pretty good. So I just noticed by flicking through here, look at these, you can see these flashing. It actually lights up the uh, connection space we're using. But can you see that when the leads are plugged in? I'm not sure we can actually see those when the leads are plugged in. Because I didn't notice that before. So when the lead's plugged in, Can you see it now? No. So with the leads plugged in, if I change modes, like you can barely see it there at the sides. You're looking side on, straight on. Can't see it at all. Obviously you can see the one which isn't in. I suppose it might prompt you if you've got the leads in the wrong place. You know, I've got the lead over there. That's nice. So if you're in the current range, you won't let you switch modes. If I turn it off, So you can trick it. No, it's gone back into current mode. So it's also detecting when there's a lead plugged in here. So nodes means you can't leave it in there and then try and go and measure a voltage because no one's ever done that, have they? I've never done that. I don't have a video about me repairing a blown up meter. Honest. Okay, maybe I do. So let's measure some capacitors. We'll do resistance and other stuff later on. 
So this is a 200 picofarad capacitor and we're getting 229. So it's ringing a bit high. This is a 1 nanofarad capacitor. It's also reading a little bit high. Here's a 20 nanofarad. That's actually really close, that one. But it's still reading very slightly high. But it's not bad, it's better. Just like the low ranges aren't quite so good. Let's check this one, which is a 1 microfarad. Got there in the end. But it's really close, it's only a few counts out, so that's not bad. Let's test a 100 microfarad cap, well it's 120 microfarad, this one, 400 volt, we have a beastie. Let's test it with this, see if we can get it. This is 108. D, I think it's 104. So in that case, this is reading slightly high again. So that's all right though. So let's just get another capacitor. Here's 1000 microfarad. We'll try it on DDR first. 1026. Try and get my probes on here without touching them. One thousand one hundred fourteen. So this is again reading slightly high. So it does seem to be reading on the high side of those measurements so far. So I'm just going through these other modes and go into temperature mode, and it's reading the internal temperatures in Fahrenheit and degrees C. So obviously, when you don't have a temperature probe plugged in here, it's reading the internal temperature. And I've plugged in the probe. It's changed. So it shift. There we go. And you're holding it. That's fine. So all my switch between internal temperature and external temperature. There's no indication of that though, so if you've got a bad probe which may be open circuit or something, you wouldn't know, because you'd just be seeing the internal temperature of the meter. If I just do one probe at a time, no, nothing there, do that one, no. So if you've got an open contact on your thermocouple probe, you would never know, because it's only going to tell you the internal temperature of the meter. I understand what I've done that, that's quite a nice feature in that way, but it should at least be detecting you've got a probe plugged in. So if you've got a fault with your probe, you'll know. So the next test is going to be its non-contact and live. What the other meters had, as is this one also has, is a lead. So you just plug in one wire, and you're going to stick that in your power point, and actually testing it. I want a voltage down to find out where it cuts out. Well, wow, that's actually really sensitive. So that's at about 10 volts AC. That's surprising. That's surprisingly good. So let's do non-contact instead of having the wire lead. That's also really sensitive. Put it anywhere near my lights, which is 12 volt. It's detecting those as well. That's actually really sensitive. That's really good. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Let's go and check out on the calibrators and see how the actual accuracy is of the voltage and resistance and stuff like that. And current, of course, we can do that too. So here we are at the calibrator. So we'll start with one volt, like I always do. So my volt AC, you got there. It's about three counts out. It is a bit warmer here than it should be. It should only be about 23 degrees or so, so it's a couple of degrees high, which may affect the readings very slightly. In this case, it shouldn't really matter. It's not like we're doing high precision, so it shouldn't really have an effect. One millivolts, two counts out. Two millivolts, one count out, but downwards in the opposite direction, which is interesting. Some are up, some are down. One millivolt, one count out. 10 volts, three counts out. 100 volts, one count out. So this is 6,000 count meters. I thought I'd just check at the top end of the range. And you can actually see that it gets a bit worse. So it's 16 counts out at the top of the range in this case, at 50 volts. So if I do the next range down, so there's a 6 volt range, 18 counts out. 600 millivolt range, 15 counts out. So this is a 6,000 count meter, and it's got a maximum voltage of 600 volts AC and DC. So we're going to test up this maximum and see what we can do. So a 600 is beeping to say it's over range. Now it goes over. So it does actually allow a slight over range. Now 
Yeah, so 10. 10 over. Okay. Well, it survived it, it didn't even blow up. That's a good thing. So now I'm going to do AC volts. So I've got it switched onto AC already. Turn the output on. And you can see it'll see on DC. So we've got here select, that switches to AC. And you can also see over here, maybe you can see it, it says true RMS. So this has got true RMS AC readings. The middle button here, I should have mentioned this before, this is a hold button. So it holds a reading on. Seems like a single function. And the select button here, I should also mention this too. It's got a torch symbol there. If you hold that button on, it turns on the torch on the rear of the unit. One volt is two counts low, so one kilohertz. Now this has got a frequency range in the specs of 40 hertz to one kilohertz. So this is at the top end of the spec. If I go down a little bit, let's do say 100 hertz, now it's actually reading slightly high. So 40 hertz, bottom of the spec, still reading fine. 20 hertz, still read it, but it's dropped off a little bit. So we'll go outside the spec. 30 hertz is acceptable. So go back to one kilohertz end, and we'll see what this does. Where does it start getting to be unstable? Yeah, okay. Probably, I'd say one half kilohertz. 1.4 maybe? Probably 1.4. I think that'll be like the spec. So, it's succeeding spec at least, that's good. So I'll leave it at one kilohertz for the rest of the test. Let's do 100 millivolts. Okay, it's one count down. 10 millivolts is bang on. One millivolt doesn't show up. So let's do 10 volts and we've got six counts out there. Within spec anyway. I think it was like plus four counts or something like that in spec. So 100 volts. It's five counts out, 50 volts, look at that, 31 counts out, that's quite a bit, and 500 volts is 25 counts out, 600, there you go, 30 counts out, so the error on this is actually a bit more than I like, 60 millivolts, 60 is bang on, 600, bang on, pretty much, I don't know, yeah, see, 6 volt range, it's like 6 down, it's, it's a bit all over the place really, it's not consistent, it's not as good as the first Kiwitz in the accuracy, but I think it's acceptable, mostly. The first Kiwitz I did was um, better accuracy than this one, so make sure you check out that review as well. So don't be nice, but it's also got this bar graph on the bottom here. I should have pointed it out, probably. So let's see how quickly it responds. Okay. So it's actually not that fast to respond. It's basically as fast as the readout is, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a bar graph because you want them to be quicker. If you want to know how much of the range you're actually occupying, then it's good for that, I suppose. So the lowest AC range is actually a 6 volt range, it's not a 600 millivolts. So if you need to do low voltage AC measurements, it might struggle with that a little bit because it won't really have the precision. That's why I can't read anything like below a millivolt or so because it just doesn't have it. It's fairly accurate down there, this is not the high voltage stuff. So let's check duty cycle and frequency accuracy on here. We haven't done that yet. So one volt in. So it's duty cycle is pretty close, only a few counts out, and frequency is bang on. Let's do 10 kilohertz. Still basically really good. Let's move this over for a little bit. 100 kilohertz, basically bang on. One megahertz, basically bang on still too. That's good. Actually, that's actually pretty good. It supports up to 10 megahertz of reading, but if you want to go that high, get a frequency scanner. And down the low end here, 100 hertz is basically bang on and duty cycle is still pretty good. The actual duty cycle and frequency on this meter is really good. Right, let's do resistance mode. So short is measuring 0.2 ohms. That's a short internally. If I get the actual jumper across the front here, we're getting zero ohms, as it should. That's fine. So we've got a slight offset here because we're only doing two wire, obviously. It's not quite as precise as full wire, but this is what this meter has. So 10.42 ohms, it's getting 10.5. Basically, that's accurate, that's good. So if we allow for half an ohm extra, we should be pretty close. Although this one is actually it's really slightly low. 1K, really slightly low. 10K, really slightly low. 100K, really slightly low. 1 meg, really slightly low. 10 meg, really slightly low. 100 meg, I bet you can't do it. I think it has to 60. Yeah, so it's over range. Hmm, interesting. All right, let's do DC current next. So I've got it set up for one milliamp DC. And we can see we're getting one milliamp on here, which is bang on. I might actually go down to 100 microamps. You can see it. I'm actually quite surprised. So 10 milliamps. So 10 milliamps is basically right. One count out. 100 milliamps. Yep, that's fine. I think they're range. So it must be a 600 milliamp range. Let's come down. So check the accuracy at the top end. So 500 milliamps, two counts out. That's all right. So back to one amp range. One count out. That's pretty good. Can do 1.9. It's 
three counts out. Oh. Hmm, interesting, it glitched. That's fine. This is as high as I'm going as Caterpillar. I could actually hook it up to my electronic load and stuff like that and do some testing through my power supply, but I don't really think it's necessary. It's, this gives you an indication of what it's like. So I'm doing one milliamp AC and it is showing it, but it can't measure the frequency. It looks like it's not quite getting enough voltage here to do it or something. It just can't quite read it. So 10 milliamps, still can't measure the frequency, and it's two counts out. 100 milliamps, two counts out, but it can measure the frequency now. So let's go down to 500 again, like it did in the last one. So it's towards the top end of that lower range. 12 counts out, but it can measure the frequency. Let's do one amp, that's looking pretty good. One count out, let's go up to 1.9. It's actually reading slightly high, but it's pretty close. It's, it's well within spec, so that's fine. I actually just noticed a bit of a quirk with this manual here. I noticed it's got these bits sticking out. I thought it was a bit of paper in the back. Anyway, it's not a bit of paper. It's the back page where it's been guillotined. It's not been done right. That's funny. It's actually just like a crease mark in it. If I fold it over, it lines up perfectly with this edge. So obviously that page got folded over when I did the guillotine in, and it hasn't actually trimmed it properly. Funny. It's the first time I've seen that. Right, let's tear this thing apart. Let's have a look inside it. See what's actually going on inside. How good is it? Is in protection. So these are plastic screws. Not surprising. It's not like you have to get in every often and replace a fuse unless you're really accident prone. Well, unlucky. <laughs> Do I take the battery cover off as well? Let's see. No, I don't. Batteries are held inside there. So it's got some contacts in there for the battery. And that's what's inside it. Spin it around. And we'll zoom. Enhance. Enhance. There we go. That's what's in there. So we've got a whole bunch of series resistors in here which increase the voltage rating. Because I think they're about 200 volts per resistor normally. So that's the breakdown voltage. That's why we've got three in series to take up to 600 volts. And it is split terminals on the current terminal here which is how it's doing the sensing to know that there's something plugged in. When it's connected or not it detects that. And there's no other split terminals only that one for the currents. Standard ceramic fuse here. Got a PTC over here for protection to a point. Don't see any mobs though. Hmm. So we've got blob, uh, TM1729. Probably a display driver. That's probably the chipset underneath here. Based on the fact that these traces are coming up towards this chip, so I guess that chip there is the multimeter chipset. So we don't know what that is. So we've also got a switching relay here, which is doing something. Not much there to see, but no moss. Hmm. So let's put this back together and like it says ratting around. I thought that's strange. Do you see what this is? See what that is? It's a solder blob. It definitely didn't come from my desk because I wiped this down before I did review. So this was inside it somewhere. And obviously when I pulled the casing apart it dislodged it. That's interesting. I wonder what that was. <laughs> if you get a ratty meter, I might not have lumped that solder balls out. <laughs> so, summary. What do I think of the meter? It seems okay. I'm not sure about the specs. I have to double check some of those specs where there's like 30 counts out in some places. Seems a bit much. But generally okay. It's a nice casing. It feels pretty robust. It looks like it's well designed. It seems like a nice meter. I mean these co weights do seem to be better quality than average. These are entry level meters but they are good for the money I think. So the meter lead selection and the highlighting here is really good. Well, it tries to stop you from making a mistake. I do really like that. Don't like the solder ball. That's a bit of a <laughs> surprise. It could just be one off. There is some hand soldering inside here where they actually attach the LCD to the circuit board. There's like some solder joints there from the backlight circuit and from the LED at the top. And also the actual terminals here as well for the sockets. It's probably just dropped off a soldering iron as we been doing this one. It's been a bit unlucky. I suppose in a way it's lucky that I'm the one that got it. It seems okay. I mean its accuracy is good enough I suppose. It's nothing wildly wrong. It looks pretty good generally. It would be nice if they came with silicon leads but you know it's a trade-off isn't it between cost and convenience. If you want silicon leads you can always get them because it's using standard jacks. You don't have to do anything special for that. You just get some standard leads off the shelf and you can use them. Fusing's okay. No mobs. Don't like the fact there's no mob protection. You should have some kind of protection on meter. Auto ranging thing. Well the auto mode thing is an interesting concept. That's what the smart thing's all about is the auto mode. It could be convenient but personally I prefer to have manual distinct modes but at least you can go between them. And I do like the fact you can go forwards and backwards between them, the modes with these two buttons. I do like that part. That's a good thought there. Because this has got dual function. It's got a line there. I wonder if this has got a dual function as well. Okay. So you can go back to auto. Yeah, okay. So if you hold it down, it'll go back to auto mode automatically instead of having to go right back around. 
So holding down does that. Learn something else. The non-contact voltage in the live lead connection, that was extremely sensitive. That's probably the best I've seen. So that's a positive. Continuity was okay, nothing wonderful. A minimum expectation of, of usability, I'd say. Anything slower than that is bad. Anything better than that's really good. I'd say it's like the minimum you'd expect from me to really for that. I don't know what these things are like for battery life. I mean, because I take four AAA batteries and you've got this big display. I don't know what these are going to be like for battery life. Also, it's running a backlight basically the whole time because it's basically an LCD display, but it's got a backlight. I don't know if that is going to drain battery life particularly quickly or not. I don't know. It's, like, it's one of these things that time will tell. You may find it chews through batteries. Big displays, easy to see. That's a good bonus. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe if you're enjoying these videos. Okay, let's refer to the manual for the meter. And auto power off can be disabled, but you do it during power up. So you have to push the select and power button at the same time. And there we go. No auto power off symbol anymore. That works. And according to the manual, the difference between the X and the Y model is purely the backlighting. So the X model allows you to turn the backlight off and the Y model does not. I'm guessing the X has got a different display. It's probably a reflective liquid crystal display instead. That's what I'm guessing. So I do like the way they've got the display angle so you can actually look up at it and see the display clearly. They've obviously thought about the fact that it's laying down on a desk and they actually considered that aspect of the design. So if someone's actually thinking about the design when they're doing these things and how it's going to be used in real life, not just some marketing person, which happens. They've got some aspects which I like, aspects which I don't like, the fact they've got these indicators to say which ones you should be connecting to, but when you've got the plugs in, you can't see them. I don't like that. So they've done a, a nice concept of having lighting up so you can see, but it's obscured by the probe themselves. So when you've got the cables plugged in, you can't see the lights. I mean, it's a shame they didn't put like separate indicators maybe above them up here on the actual plastic front here. So it was above and then at least you'd be visible if you've got the leads plugged in. So that's a bit of an oversight there, I think. But I suppose it does help me got the amps one lighting up. And the way they have the meter locking, so if you've got a lead connected to the amps jack, that it uh, prevents you from going into other modes, so you don't accidentally try and do a voltage measurement with the leads across the amps. I do like that aspect as well. So thanks a lot, Kai Weeks, for seeing this to me at no cost. I've created a playlist for all these multimeters that I'm doing reviews on, so that'll be showing up at the end here somewhere, or maybe a card at the beginning or the end or something. Maybe around here somewhere, I'll put a card up there in the corner. Watch out for the card. So there's a playlist for all the multimeters I've been doing reviews on, and in, in the reviews I do in the future as well, so you'll see them all in one spot. So you can go through and actually watch a whole playlist of all these budget multiple reviews. Maybe choose one you like. But Kai Wheats, I've been pretty impressive so far. They've been very good. They, the build quality is excellent. They feel like decent quality meters. You know, they don't feel cheap, which is a nice point in itself. Don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, do what the desk says, and I'll catch you later. Bye.